Joining me now is the Bonson Group Chief Investment Officer, Founder and Managing Partner, and the author of Full Time, Work and the Meaning of Life. David Bonson is with me. David, great to see you. You say valuations are the number one challenge for market. Tell me about that and, and give us your outlook for the year. Well, let's take all the different scenarios that could be difficult for markets, uh, a tough economy, uh, the Fed tightening more than people think, um, you know, even even a recession in a worst case scenario further out. All of those things may not happen. You may not get any of that bad news. Earnings growth may come in where projected. It may even come in a tiny bit above. The problem, Maria, is all of that is already priced in. No recession priced in. Earnings growth priced in. Fed eventually not uh, only not uh, hiking rates, but beginning to cut rates later in the year priced in. If anything goes a tiny bit worse than expected, the market's very vulnerable. And if it doesn't go worse than expected, when you're starting off at 22 times earnings, there's a very good chance of the markets having to reprice to a, a point of more reasonable valuation. Well, I mean, are, uh, is the no rate cut scenario already priced in? I mean, I think there's a debate on that one, isn't there? Some people still think there's a shot for a rate cut this year. Well, the market itself does. The futures market is right. saying about a 50 percent chance of a rate cut in September. But, Maria, we started off the year with six rate cuts priced right. in beginning in March. We're now down to maybe, maybe one or two by the end of the year. And the S&P is up 10 percent on the year. Yeah. The market doesn't care about this stupid Fed story. The yeah. market knows the only thing it needs to know, that the Fed is done raising rates and that whether it's September, December, January, at some short term point they will begin cutting the yeah. markets know that and, yeah, and yet point, exactly yeah. when they begin i'm now of the mindset they won't end up cutting until november mm -hmm. i i think you're right i don't think they want to get in front of the election either but let's take a look at where the 10 year right. is this morning as you can see uh we're waiting on the next meeting there in july a look at the 10 year this morning it's up a half a basis point as investors expect, the Federal Reserve will likely not cut rates this summer, as you just said. The futures market pricing in a 49 percent chance uh, for the Fed's first rate cut in September. We've got big uh, inflation data on deck this week. That will certainly inform. We get the second read of first quarter GDP. That's out on Thursday. Economists are expecting the economy to grow 1.3 percent last quarter. We'll also get the PCE uh, out on Friday, David. Now, look at this GDP number at first, in the first quarter. We've gone from 4.9 percent in the third quarter of last year, David, all the way down to 1.6 percent. Now we're expecting it to go to 1.3 percent. Things are slowing down quite considerably here. Is that going to hit margins and earnings? Um, I don't think so, because that GDP move was really more about inventories last quarter. And the 4.9 last uh, quarter in the Q3 of last year was quite an outlier uh, also around more transitory things. The biggest issue is we need more fixed investment on the corporate side of the economy. Businesses have got to be investing in productivity. And we are seeing some of it. And there is a certain industrial activity that's reasonably healthy. But again, Maria, it's a longer term story. We are so far off of trend line growth. Going back to the financial crisis, we are nowhere near just averaging about 3% real GDP growth. And that's what we need to get back to, to have a healthy U.S. economy. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, Cheryl, jump in here. Well, I mean, I wanted to ask about the economy because, you know, now that earnings season is wrapping up, we've got, we've got Costco this week, but it has been a rough week for a lot of these names, a rough couple of weeks for these names. And when you've got people like McDonald's, companies like McDonald's and, and other retailers that are saying that they're in trouble, uh, that, that that really shows you that the consumer has pulled back so exponentially that that spending, that GDP growth that you're talking about, is it going to come to fruition? And, and I'm not I'm, I'm wondering when that's even going to change, because the inflation data is not going in the right direction. It keeps going in the wrong direction. Yeah, so I disagree with both statements, to be honest. I just think that the inflation has done nothing but go down other than that shelter figure. And you get outliers like the auto insurance and the, and, and so forth. But um, the fact of the matter is that despite the administration's efforts where they have made the labor shortage worse, we have not gotten the productivity we need. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that this is much about the Fed either. Um, yeah. I think that you have a, a price inflation and rent that has held the over 
overall number above oh, three. Yeah. The PC, the PCE, it's down around two and a half. But if you look at the real numbers, Zillow, yep. National Apartment Rent, Realtor, that number's come way lower. I think that the consumer is the last thing any of us need to worry about because Americans yeah. just simply love to spend money. Well, Our by the way, problem well, well, is the supply side. We need to produce more. Yeah, it's a great point that you make. And you've made this point for a while, the supply side. Uh, and, and I'm glad you, you're, you're raising it. But we will also get a window into the consumer this week when we get earnings from Dick's Sporting Goods, Dollar General, Best Buy, Kohl's, all coming out this week. Costco, Nordstrom is out on Thursday. Uh, so you've got that as well. Rebecca, your thoughts on the macro story? You know, I have to disagree with David. I think that, yes, inflation is coming down, but it's still year over year. It's, it's down from 9% at its peak in 21, but it's year over year still up, and it's certainly above the Fed's target. And, you know, Lending Tree just produced a study that said 78% of the respondents of a survey said that fast food is now luxury to them. So this is a problem. Burger King mm. is saying, hey, we've got so many problems. Taco Bell's coming out yesterday and saying there's lots of problems. So when you've got fast food failing in America, you've got massive, massive un- underlying found, 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 fundamental problems. Yeah. I, and I don't know that the jobs picture is as strong as it looks anyway, David. There's a lot of part-time growth in jobs, right? Um, there is part-time growth, but it's mostly voluntary. But it's it's t- difficult to argue with, with any number in the high threes. And, Maria, the point I've made before is the weekly jobless claims are the one data point that just cannot lie. You really simply have a very low amount of Americans applying for unemployment. I think on the inflation side, you know, McDonald's is down from its high, but it is up so dramatically. Um, th- there's a lot of idiosyncratic stories that I think a lot of us need to appreciate. And what I mean by that is the consumer is not reflecting in one company's numbers. It isn't mm. like Walmart can do real well and Kohl's can do poorly yeah. because the consumer's doing poorly. There's yeah. some companies that are simply outperforming other companies, um, but it's very true. Inflation's up year over year because inflation yeah. is always up year over year. It's well, never it's down, ever. It's, it's up about 19% on Joe Biden's watch in, in the last three, three years, three and a half years. So that's certainly... That, that's feeling. exactly right. The total aggregate price yeah. movement over the last three years is massive. No yeah. question about it. David, thank you. Great to get your insights on all of that. Good to see you, sir. David Bonson joining us this morning.